Um, the question is about drugs. And Willie Nelson was the simplest in explaining to me that if you have mild marijuana, mild euphoria, and clean, pure, but you, if you have that, you can't, no one hit wonder. But then you can't drink. And if you drink, you should have beer or wine, no aluminum cans, quality. But then you can't smoke. And he thought it was a right left brain. I thought that smoking gets you airhead kind of thing. <clears throat> and drinking, as Rudolf Steiner points out, pulls you into the blood and more fully incarnates you. So you can be over incarnated. <clears throat> Whereas, and I do think they should legalize marijuana. I don't smoke, nor take drugs or medicines. But I think they should legalize it. <clears throat> How else can we help heroin addicts? We should legalize all drugs. And, and that way we can help these people. And marijuana, we should legalize so we can get rid of all the crooks and try to just teach people how to handle it. But the thing that Tim Leary said that was really great when I debated him in the middle of the Mayflower, uh, <clears throat> he said you should drop acid once a year to clean the pipes out, which I debated Ram Dass about this too, and he's not talking to me at the moment. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> Tim Leary is much smarter. And Tim Leary said that he had to think about that. I told him it was a time spirit. The time spirit has you locked in. All drugs, medications have you locked in. When you cross abuse, you get locked in to a time spirit, and then you're thrown out, and you're not free. There's no freedom. And after a certain point of time with too many drugs, it's completely selfish. You're on your own little dream trip, and you're alone. You're, you're laying in the snow behind Greek town, dying, and you're dreaming that your wife and your kids who left you years ago are still with you, and you're by a fireplace because you're on drugs and it's selfish and you're in your own little personal selfish nirvana uh, <clears throat> heaven world but it doesn't the people go to South America and take legal drugs but then they go back again and again like little rats mm -hmm. they want their pleasure button to be pushed mm -hmm. and they don't bring back a vision for the community that helps us you know so you went on a high and you came back Tim Leary said that you should have <clears throat> quality substance that you know what you're getting and you know what the effects are and you know the measurement. You should have somebody, you should have proper environment. You're not driving up and down Woodward being paranoid of the cops. Mm -hmm. You have like a really beautiful place that's right. safe. Right. You have somebody that's not on it to keep you in check. And the most important thing, he said, is that you have these books, these metaphysical, spiritual Bibles, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, the Tibetan Buddhist books, Rudolf Steiner, Blavatsky's Isis Unveiled. You have all these kind of books, Osho, as maps to the inner worlds, maps to the astral planes. Tim Leary said you had to have the maps because otherwise you're getting high and you have nowhere to go. <laughs> and that was the problem with people getting high is they have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And so after a while, you gnaw on yourself or the people next to you. What's eating you? What's gnawing on you? See, and so uh, to do it on nothing is really the way. That's an emptiness practice is to do it on nothing. And we all are kind of, uh, forced to eat food and stuff, you know. So so the Tibetans are the most polite about it. They'll say that you can get a glimpse with drugs, but you can't keep it unless you have spiritual practice and you have something, some kind of way of thinking and uh, that can hold uh, spiritual thinking. And if you don't have oh, intelligent consciousness, and anybody can look intelligent for a couple of minutes, but uh, unless we have some way of intelligently communicating our gifts and our qualities and our maps and techniques for getting results that in real spirituality there's no fallback so a lot of over drinking or taking drugs wrong drugs whatever is like always tearing down the house so you build up a house and you tear it down and you have to build it up again <clears throat> mm -hmm. and most people can't overcome their ego so they destroy it with drugs but the problem with drugs is you enter a spiritual world but you're not there anymore so there's no sense of grounding or grounding or set or, or work direction. work achieved or meaningfulness of lasting import to anybody besides your uh, what you claim is your insight that you got from it mm -hmm. which is usually short-lived so <clears throat> Jesus and Buddha said you'll know them <clears throat> um, <clears throat> By their actions, you should know them. You'll know them, who's good, who's with us. You'll know them by their actions. But then they realize that 
people would behave really good to get whatever they wanted, their desire. And uh, they could behave really good for a weekend or a week. And so the actions were a little shaky. So then they said like, oh, oh, you know them by their fruits, you'll know them. And that is that you would see what happens in the next 10 years, 20 years, what happens to your children's children, what happens to the next life. And <clears throat> to a large extent, the Tibetans were so unsure of one's motivation because people tend to have a way of manipulating the pie so they get their piece of the pie or whatever, or they're after something. You want something then, they say in Jamaica. Um, you want something now, I can get it for you. And so the Tibetans have this way of thinking that you can't be trusted with your motivation. Good intentions, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So they thought that you should wish for better chance next lifetime. So if we're always wishing for a better chance next lifetime to get enlightened, to get intelligent, to find a nourishment that would help us on the quest for the grail, uh, and something that would truly entertain us to stay in the real game of life, then <clears throat> we should wish for next lifetime for a better chance, and then we might have a better chance this life. Hmm. Interesting. That's it. That's it. Um, <clears throat> Can you just explain real quick that your that image of like the the drugs as like a time spirit that traps <coughs> that traps you? It's selfish. It's <clears throat> what's well, a biochemical thing with no freedom. It's only a temporary glimpse. The Tibetans are the nicest about it. They say it's a temp at the very best you might have a temporary glimpse. Mm -hmm. My yeah, first spiritual teacher said, if you're not addicted, quit. Prove it. Uh, I think most of us are addicted. The biggest addictions, though, are the addictions to negativity and to um, repeat offenders and uh, things we do that repeat repeatedly offend ourselves, our higher self. And <clears throat> there's no shame or blame. There's only learning. You know, it's not about that. And a lot of people can't be helped until they hit a, more of a bottom. Um, and <clears throat> we live in a time, obviously, where... Uh, uh, there's uh, suicide and uh, subtle suicide is harder to understand so the subtle suicide is when we're doing like the demon lover is the things we do that hurt ourselves and others but we keep doing them anyway mm -hmm. that's real psychology self-terrorism pardon me self-terrorism like uh, in a way yeah but I think it would be a little softer to say demon lover demon lover yeah it's what's eating us mm -hmm. you know and these things that we do that hurt ourselves and others and we do them anyway and that's why I strongly promote Tibetan Buddhism, the right books on it, and Rudolf Steiner and Manly Ha, and H.P. Blavatsky's Isis and Bill the Secret Doctrine, Voice of the Silence and the Key to Theosophy would be a good place to start with Blavatsky. And Blavatsky is something that Gandhi read and Martin Luther King Jr. read and Einstein's daughter told me that Einstein read it and it was heavily underlined on, on his desk when he died. And most of all the authors in the bookstore had read The Secret Doctrine. Why? It's a woman, and she reveals all the secrets of spirituality, you know, <clears throat> up until the late 1800s. And then Rudolf Steiner continues, and both Blavatsky and Steiner make predictions about where we're going, which are still coming true. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, for the, most part, for the most part, drugs are just a distraction. Trying to save people that we can't save is also a distraction. And <clears throat> so uh, the message that I always have is that you have to work on yourself. Change yourself to change others. Worry about yourself more than others, and they'll follow. If you, if you become an emulation model uh, by showing by the way you live, it's not about <clears throat> somebody being perfect. There is no perfection. There's only wholeness. It's not about somebody being perfect, but it's about somebody, the way we the way we trust each other is that when I see you again, you would have done something to help educate yourself. That you would have that you would have learned from your mistakes. That you keep you don't keep making the same mistake again. And <clears throat> um, uh, that that's more of the message, you know. We obviously live in a drug culture. The pharmaceutical companies are the drug lords. And uh, the doctors have to obey the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies so you don't get paid. In fact, you get sued. And so uh, if they put as much money as they do in the pharmaceutical company, 
into preventative medicine like whole foods, food as medicine, plum market, nutri foods, the garden patch, you know, all these health food stores, and backyard gardens. <coughs> if we put as much effort into that and yoga and exercise and learning to think this way, learning to think uh, <coughs> with virtue mind, then, and, and then avoid getting entangled with uh, people that are always uh, trying to entangle us. You know, I mean, how many people really want you to be happy? Mostly misery likes company. So there's virtuous circles, the non-virtuous circles. So I, again, <clears throat> the real spiritual path is for the lonely. You have to be alone with yourself. Then, when you're alone with yourself, for real, and you study these things, and you contemplate your experience and what's going on in the world, and you get somewhere with that, then when you can be alone with yourself, you can be alone with anyone. When you're really alone with yourself, everybody will want to be with you because they feel alone. But they don't have the holy aloneness. They don't have the holy fuck. <laughs> they have the fuck you. They, they go, or I'm fucked. The fuck wad. <laughs> Then they have these friends that are the dumb fuck. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> There's a lot of fucks in this world. Look for the holy fuck. <laughs> the holy fuck. <laughs> the, is not that, your that next it book? just fucks your mind. <laughs> the holy fuck is where the fuck stops here. <laughs> and from here on, we grow no matter what happens. The holy fuck is where the fuck stops here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you don't understand what I'm saying, you'll say, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> what the F? <laughs> <laughs> what, the fu yeah, what the fuck is up? So, so we're really looking for uh, um, a little peace of mind. And uh, we, to find that, you have to have stillness. And there's moving, and there's non-moving meditation. And so... The moving meditation mm -hmm. is learning to think this way, as in these books, and being able to have this kind of vocabulary. I think you should be very, very worried about somebody who knows the price of every drug on the street. I wouldn't hang out with that person unless they're going to meditate and do yoga with you. And, uh, you know, spectator sports might be doing more damage. The good thing about the drug addict is they're knocking themselves out of the picture. Get out of the way! If you cannot work with me, get out of the way! So that's a good thing. But what are you going to do with the gamblers? And the sports column, you know, the arenas of hockey where the hot blood hits the cold ice and everybody cheers for more blood. Gladiator sports. And gambling on things outside of yourself. And not investing in learning piano, learning how to garden, learning how to make health food like in the self-healing cookbook. Kristen Turner. Or eating at the Om Cafe. Um, and then there's pornography. Spectator sports is like pornography. You grow older, and the eternal youth keep banging their bodies on the field. And, and in football, they slap the anus, and no baby. <laughs> Another ball comes out. I don't get it. And so, so spectator sports is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. And American men, especially, are losing their... Uh, sense of spiritual gravity and <clears throat> their sense of what matters re for real and their, their sense of true love and uh, compassion for all the suffering and how we can prevent war on the planet and bring it uh, peace and joy to everyone and protect the children and the little ones and the trees even and pornography and gambling and spectator sports is doing a lot to uh, distract and even harm our thinking, yeah, spiritual thinking, and our true, uh, the true measure of a, a human heart. So this is what I think, and uh, it's worthy of debating. And I think that uh, uh, it's important to have inner wealth, this inner wealth of, of qualities and knowledge, because if you don't have the inner wealth, uh, you're intimidated by external wealth. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, a lot of people have external wealth, but they don't have that internal wealth, and there's a problem that they're not rich enough to be generous, compassionate, patient, endearing, enduring, contemplative, meditational, 
they don't have these qualities. So <clears throat> I think that's good. I think that's good too. Thank you. So 